Hey everybody, it's Matthew Griffin here, better known as a fanatical futurist. I hope you're all well. So this is just a little experiment of mine. So this is just kind of a little first run of what I'm going to call bite-sized futures. So uh, as I travel around the world in normal times, lots of people ask me lots of things about lots of different technologies, lots of different types of futures, what the impacts mean for them, uh, what's going to happen, you know, all that kind of sort of crazy stuff. So um, I created a website. I've got a blog. Basically, there are over 3,000 articles, so you can see it here. There are over 3,000 articles on hundreds of emerging technologies that date all the way from typically sort of 2017, if we're sort of going back in time, all the way through to kind of the likes of 2,500. And if you're wondering what technologies are going to be coming through potentially in 2,500, uh, then just go to the website, 311institute.com, go and have a look at something called Stellar Engines. So Stellar Engines are a type of theoretical uh, engine that can move a universe. So you can kind of put it right up there along with warp drive, Dyson spheres and other kind of mega structures. But um, this is there's no particular structure basically to bite-sized futures, but it's really designed to give you sort of a, a, a sort of five-minute view of different aspects of the future and hopefully help you think uh, and imagine what some of these things basically could mean for you. So um, kicking it off, um, so this is sort of one of the recent articles that I've written. Um, Tail light packing helmet is powered by nothing more than ambient light. Now, to most people, that's just going to sound like a gadget review. It's going to sound fairly boring, um, but actually it's highly significant. So here what we're doing is we're using a new type of material called a nanophotonic material, which is able to capture the very short wavelengths of light, ambient light, and generate electricity from those at efficiencies of about 17 to 20 percent. Now what that means for everybody is if you're a parent and you've got kids basically who've got loads and loads of battery operated toys, you stick one of these materials over those toys, you have toys that no longer need batteries. So just think about how many batteries are sold on the planet every day. I'm gauging it's probably in the hundreds of millions, um, if not more. I see, yeah, my kids go through batteries like crazy, it's nuts. Um, so this one is also something that can be used to power Internet of Things devices and sensors and different sort of edge computing devices that are at the very edges of the networks. Again, especially relevant as we start having a look at things like 5G coming through. Um, the next article, so uh, here, uh, in a world first, an AI just made its own synthetic human genome. Now, on the one hand, basically, that's a that's a revolutionary in itself. You know, artificial intelligence has been able to create different sort of organism genomes, basically, for a, a couple of years now. This is the first time they've ever created a human genome. Now, where this part gets kind of crazy is when you start combining this particular technology with uh, artificial wombs, artificial human sperm and eggs, and all these sorts of things, which we can get from pluripotent stem cells. Um, again, search the article for that. Search the website for that. You'll see uh, loads of stuff on that as well. Um, this is where ultimately we can use a 3D bioprinter to 3D print an artificial human genome, which we can then grow ex vivo. So if you watch uh, Blade Runner 2049, um, you see replicants coming out of these uh, sort of, you know, these these sacks. Um, if you watch Star Wars, basically with the Clone Wars, basically it's kind of that sort of technology on steroids. Um, this is made even crazier by the fact that by 2036, uh, universities like Harvard, UCL, and MIT believe that they will actually be able to 3D print their own artificial human genomes. So what happens when an artificial intelligence is able to design genomes that can then be used to create designer humans? Um, that's just a nutty technology right there. Um, floating island. Um, so this is literally just in the order that I write these. There's no particular order to sort of, you know, the, the conversation that we're having today. Um, floating island um, comes to homes costing over a billion dollars. About 18 months ago, the United Nations signed off on the world's first sit ocean based city. Uh, it's called Oceanics. Um, so as the world starts flooding, thanks to climate change, you know, if you live around by Miami, this is going to be in the Bahamas. You know, Miami is flooding more often than uh, than not now. Um, today, 70% of the earth is covered in water. Tomorrow, it's probably going to be 99% of the earth is covered in water. So when we start talking about floating cities and floating islands, I see that's actually yeah, an increasing uh, trend that I'm seeing in the architectural community. Um, this one's a little bit nutty as well. Uh, everyone knows that the future of transportation is going to be electric and autonomous. Um, but what about this one from Hyundai? I see it's a uh, it's a 
car called the Tiger. Um, and I'll show you a little video and then I'm going to sort of cut out. Um, so uh, the Tiger is a flying, walking, autonomous car. Uh, and if you've ever wanted to see what one of those looks like, uh, then, you know, here we go. Um, so it's going to click technology. Mm. OK, it doesn't actually want to click. So No, here we go. Uh, I'm working from the studio today, so the Internet sucks. Um, so here we go. Now, um, I'm just going to play like a minute of this, but just to sort of give you a bit, little bit, a little bit of an idea of uh, what the crazy transportation of the future looks like. Uh, here you go. The new concept is called Tiger, which stands for Transforming Intelligent Ground Excursion Robot. The version I'm showing here is called Tiger X1, where X stands for Experimental. Tiger is a modular platform similar to Elevate, our first UMV revealed at CES 2019. Now the two have many similarities. They both can transform from four-wheel drive to four-legged walking, they're both designed to travel over complex terrain, exceeding the limits of even the most capable off-road vehicles. The main difference is that Tiger is designed to operate without an onboard crew. It's an autonomous platform that can carry various types of payloads such as materials, goods, or instrumentation. Tiger X so now when you think about the future of the car, if I take out the wheel, this, if I take out the steering wheel, the dashboard, and I take out the pedals, have you got a car or have you got an autonomous pod, you know, like this thing? Um, if you have an autonomous pod, um, then you've already got the death of the car. Um, now, if you sort of want to see these articles, you can go to the, the website 311institute.com, just click the blog at the top. Uh, and then if you want to sort of start hunting around and sort of uh, looking at some of the other uh, things that are on the website, uh, I've got all these different tags. There are over 3,000 different tags. Um, as I say, I follow over 450 exponential emerging technologies as well as thousands of different industry innovations. So just kind of click these different tags down here that you'll find in all the articles and you can sort of go and uh, go through them all till your heart's content. But uh, as for me, that's it, I'm out now. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you've got any comments, if you want me to talk about any particular technologies, put them in the uh, comments below. Uh, if you like this kind of format, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. You know, I, I suck up criticism fairly well. You know, it's part of my job. Um, but uh, anyway, hope you're all well and uh, great talking with you. See you soon. Bye.